So this is gonna be a uh, kind of a video to augment the previous video. So I'm gonna call this Bouchong chapter 1.1 and I want to dial in a couple of things that, um, that need to be explained a little bit. So usually I have this lecture um, the first day of, of your uh, physics class and I walk through all the different types of energy and I'm drawing on the board the entire time. So I want to review the energy types and I want to show you a, a picture of the X-ray circuit um, and the X-ray tube and explain to you where all of that stuff takes place. So I would mentioned in the previous recording that kinetic energy is energy, um, I'm sorry, that the, uh, potential energy is, is a, uh, a stored energy, it's an unrealized energy and it, um, we usually use it to describe KVP. And I'm going to show you where the KVP is created, where the potential energy becomes kinetic energy, kinetic energy being the energy of motion. Um, chemical energy, I, I can't really show you that, but just take my word for it. We do use batteries to power some of our machines. Um, and that's where we would use that. So in each one of these things, um, we're going to create or we're gonna use electricity to create the, the different types of energy, including thermal energy. Anytime that we send electrons through a circuit down a wire, we're gonna get two things. <clears throat> one, we're gonna spend quite a bit of time talking about throughout the semester. The first one is easy, and I described that um, in the previous recording, and that is we're gonna create heat. But we're also, anytime you send an electron down, the, down a wire, or anytime you have a charged particle in motion, you create uh, magnetism. And I'm, I'm gonna show you where we use that here in just a few minutes as well. So nuclear energy we described uh, as being the, the energy that you'll get out of the nucleus of an atom. And we might use that if we're drawing power from a nuclear power plant. And our goal is to create electromagnetic radiation and that is um, X-rays, gamma rays, light, radio frequency, and a, a lot of different types of energies are electromagnetic. Uh, specifically though, what we're trying to create are X-rays. We create a little bit of light. We create a lot of heat, um, so thermal radiation. Um, but what we're after primarily is electromagnetic. And electromagnetic radiation is radiation that demonstrates both electric and magnetic properties. Um, then we talk about energy and matter, and that's the basis for Einstein's E equals MC squared. Uh, we talked about them being interchangeable. Um, I want to go ahead and fast forward to the X-ray circuit, and that's what we're looking at here. So I, I generally draw this, and it looks really complicated, but we're going to learn every step of this throughout the semester. So I started the last recording saying that this, that, um, the uh, videos that I linked to the video that I, I posted on Monday um, were semester, they were basically semester long, um, semester overview, overviews or semester long, um, uh, I don't know, videos that, that kind of summed up the entire semester. So we're gonna learn this this image here um, in detail, and we're gonna talk about each, each portion of this, this, uh, this image. So what we have is that incoming electricity goes through uh, this thing right here, which I usually skip for the first half of this class because it really doesn't matter, because you just don't see it. Um, you don't manipulate this thing, but it's what we refer to as a line voltage compensation circuit. And it's basically a surge protector. So I usually start the lecture, <clears throat> this part of the lecture, by saying the first thing that the electricity gets to is this thing right here. And that's what we refer to as an auto transformer. An auto transformer is a form of rheostat. So we've got a couple of different rheostats. One just doesn't show up on this, this, uh, this image at all, but we've got a second rheostat down here in the filament circuit. So what a rheostat does is it's kind of like a dimmer switch in a, on a light. You can turn the lights up, you can turn the lights down, you can make it brighter, you can make it dimmer, but this is basically our KVP selector. So essentially what we do 
is we've got this coil of wire that we're going to supply alternating current to it. Alternating current means that the, the electricity goes in one direction and then it goes back in the opposite direction. So we're going to use an alternating current and we're going to, I'm going to tell you why we have to have alternating current. Um, and we're going to study that later in the semester. I'm going to mention it here in a minute. But we have to have alternating current to make this thing work. So what we've got then is, if you notice on the primary side, and this will be the primary side, primary side of any circuit or electromagnetic device would be the side that you supply current to. Okay, so we supply alternating current, that's AC current, to this side of the auto transformer, and that gives us a changing magnetic field. Now, if we plug into, you see a contact here, and you see a contact, uh, well, if we had a contact here, so that this exact same number of coils were incorporated on the primary side as what we have on the secondary side, that we'd have no change in voltage. But if you notice, this is kind of squeezed in a little bit, and it looks like maybe uh, this is squeezed in a little bit. So if you use fewer turns on the secondary side of the auto transformer than, than what you put on the primary side of the auto transformer, then your voltage will go down. So in that way, we're selecting our voltage here. We have, have to have alternating current to make this thing work, but if we put the same contacts or we, we squeeze our contacts together on the secondary side, we can create lower voltage on the secondary side than what we have on the primary side. If though we spread it out, then our voltage can increase. All right, so this is a KVP meter just to tell us how much KVP we're gonna eventually create. Um, some of your textbooks, including Bouchon, will call this a pre-reading KVP meter which is a better description than a KVP meter because we don't have KVP yet, we just have voltage. So we have auto transformer and then we've got something else over here that has two coils. The distinguishing characteristic of auto transformer is it only has one coil. Coil, C-O-I-L, coil. It's East Texas, it sounds like C-O-L, coil. So our high voltage transformer is what you're looking at here. And if you notice, you've got two separate coils. So you've got uh, fewer turns on the primary side. Again, we're supplying alternating current to this side. Um, and we've got more turns on the secondary side. So what that means is the same thing as what it would have meant over here if we had more coils incorporated on the secondary side than the primary side, our voltage would go up. But the turns ratio over here is uh, quite different. So we may have a thousand turns on the secondary side of the, this transformer, a thousand times as many as what we have on the primary side. So what that means is that as we run our alternating current through this coil of wire, we get a changing magnetic field, but if we move a secondary coil close enough to it, then we can create alternating current in the secondary side of this, but because we have so many more coils on the secondary side, then our voltage is gonna go up. This is where our kilovoltage comes from, is what we refer to as a high voltage uh, transformer. We're not gonna worry about these components right here. We're gonna talk about those later in the semester. We're not gonna worry about these components. We're gonna talk about those later in the semester. But essentially in an X-ray circuit, we've got two separate circuits working at the same time. The secondary circuit is what we refer to as the uh, filament circuit. The filament circuit is what heats your filament up. So when you hit the, the prep button, um, so if you've seen this in lab, you've got two, a two position uh, button or you've got two different buttons. And what you'll hear the technologist say or the, your lab tech say is uh, rotor up. So if you, depress the rotor button, then what's going to happen is that you're going to activate this circuit down here and you're going to create a lot of heat right there. At the same time, you're going to rotate this thing here. And we're going to take a look at what, what all that means here in just a bit. So you're going to uh, rotate this and you're going to create a lot of heat here. You're going to congest a lot of electrons there. Um, and you're not creating any x-rays at that point. Once you depress the exposure button, then you're gonna send the electrons from this thing across the x-ray tube 
and you're going to create x-rays. So in this next slide, what we're going to see is the x-ray tube. So this is this thing right here just turned sideways. So what we're going to have is that as you depress the rotor button, you'll, you'll see you've got rotor here and you've got stator here. So rotor means rotation. This entire thing is going to spin around and around. Stator means stationary. It's not going to move. But what this does is it creates magnetic fields that go around and around the x-ray tube so that you can uh, rotate this thing. So the stator rotates the rotor. So when the technologist rotors up, you hear them say rotor up and you hear the x-ray tube start to spin and whine, what you're hearing is this thing starting to turn. So the stator turns this thing in about one second, it goes from stationary to 3000 RPMs. At the exact same time, what you're getting is on this thing, you're getting a congestion of electrons. So again, anytime you have electrons running through a circuit, what you're gonna create is a lot of heat. So at that point, you've got potential energy. You don't really have kinetic energy yet. You've got kinetic energy going through this, but in as much as you've got uh, X-ray tube current, you don't, you don't have it yet. So you've got potential energy. You've created a space charge an electron cloud around the filament, but you're not creating x-rays. So just because you hear the x-ray tube spin up like that does not mean the x-ray is being created. It's not until you push the exposure button or the, that second position that the electrons travel from cathode, that's what we call this, the cathode, the filament, cathode to anode, and then what we're going to do is take all those hot electrons, it's what we refer to as thermionic emissions, hot electrons, and we're gonna send them across the x-ray tube to interact on the face of this target over here on the anode. So what it's gonna do essentially is, is it's gonna deposit a lot of heat, it's gonna create a, a few x-rays, and you're gonna create some light as well. What we're after though is the x-rays. Um, unfortunately, about 1% of the electrons we send across the x-ray tube become x-rays. The rest just become heat, they become light, and they don't do a whole lot for us. So going back to this, what we've got is electric energy coming in and creating magnetic fields all throughout this thing, all over the place. Well, here's, here's the MA selector, which is also a rheostat. I'm sorry, I, I thought it was gonna be down here, but it's actually up here. This is a, a, a image I, I took off, I think, Reddit. So um, we're going to create magnet. We're going to use electricity to create magnetic fields so that we can use magnetic fields to either increase or decrease our KVP. And then we're going to send that adjusted voltage, it's not even KVP yet, into this thing so that we can create very high potential difference in, in KVP. So uh, we're going to create KVP and then we're gonna send that into our x-ray tube. At the same time, we're heating the filament and we're spinning this thing around and around. So we've got not just uh, electric energy, we've got thermal energy, and we've actually got kinetic energy inside of the x-ray tube um, in the form of torque. Torque is just uh, force applied in a, a circular motion. So we've created a circular motion here. We've created a lot of heat here electricity increasing to create KVP, which is our potential difference. We've got the, the electrons stored here, but once we, once we depress the uh, KVP button, or I'm sorry, the exposure button, the electrons become kinetic energy and they travel across the x-ray tube to create electromagnetic energy. So back over here, um, we rotate this around. So we've got mechanical energy in the form of torque it's kinetic energy. This thing spins around and around. Until we depress the exposure button, we don't have kinetic energy through the x-ray tube. We just got it through the filament. So it doesn't really count since it's not going through the x-ray tube. It's not until we apply the KVP that, that the potential is released and it becomes kinetic energy to travel across the x-ray tube. So uh, I hope that helps to, to understand why all of those different types of energy matter. Uh, something else, though, that struck me after I finished the, the, um, the recording from the other day is this, that radiation, 
Again, not all radiation is harmful, and electromagnetic radiation can be harmful if it's ionizing radiation. So electromagnetic radiation is anything that behaves mainly like light and travels in waves, and we'll talk about that later. It travels at the same speed, and that would be in the speed of light, and it exhibits electric and magnetic properties. So that gets us part of the way. But we also have, in electromagnetic radiation, we've got um, ionizing radiation as well. So a couple of things about ionizing radiation and electromagnetic radiation. Not all electromagnetic radiation is ionizing radiation. Just the x-rays and gamma rays, definitely. I would throw potentially uh, ultraviolet rays in there because that's what you get some burns off of um, as possibly being ionizing. Uh, and I say that because the early stages of a radiation burn are identical to uh, a sunburn, really. Uh, the, the skin continues to deteriorate um, in radiation exposure. You know, if you have a very high level of radiation exposure, ionizing radiation exposure, x-rays, uh, whereas with a sunburn, it just peels. But um, I would be very careful and make sure you, you put your sunblock on and, and count it as, as potentially a ionizing radiation. The rest of the, the um, forms of electromagnetic radiation are not ionizing radiation. In addition to that, not uh, ionizing, I'm sorry, electromagnetic radiation are not the only forms of ionizing radiation. You also have ionizing radiation when you have um, uh, radioactive decay. So um, you've got a couple of different ways that you that, that uh, a highly unstable atom will seek to become stable. One is alpha emission and one is beta emission. And through those alpha and beta emissions, you're going to have ionizing radiation, but it's not electromagnetic radiation. So I'll walk through this because there are test questions that you need to pay attention to. Um, not all forms of electromagnetic radiation are ionizing. Just x-rays and gamma rays definitely possibly you've got uh, ultraviolet and not all, um, the, let's see, the, the only form, let's see, let me back that up. Electromagnetic radiation is not the only form of ionizing radiation. Um, when you have alpha and beta decay, then you also have ionizing radiation. So I'm gonna just pull that up here um, and just, use this as an augment for the the first lecture. Um, I hope this this helps and whenever you get to the test, just don't confuse those those things about ionizing radiation, electromagnetic radiation. Um, and also I, I hope it, it helps you to understand where we're using all those different types of of uh, energy conversion.